you, but I feel like a lot of women don't even know they have it until they are actually trying to conceive. And then, you know, prior to that, either they don't take notice or they just think it's so cumbersome and that it's normal or that there's just something wrong with them and nobody can figure it out. So Kim's been with Alive for like so many years now, and we have never interviewed I Kim Hang like, hello, what the heck were we thinking? And uh, yesterday, he whips out this beautiful newsletter for Alive. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, we need to talk about this. Right. So Kim was speaking to PCOS, with, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. And um, the reason why is because it's PCOS Awareness Month. And for those who are actually watching our podcast through YouTube, um, Dr. Tanya, but is so socially appropriate and wearing the colors. <laughs> and I am so sorry, I am not. But anyway, so if you want to watch it, you can see her in this beautiful blue teal color, <laughs> which thank represents you. PCOS. So thank yes. you for that. <laughs> for sure. Um, anyway, so I was reading this. I'm like, oh my gosh, we need to talk about this coming mm -hmm. from a point of view where, you know, women with PCOS are always looking at ways to help themselves. And we'll speak to more as to what that is, because that's, you know, the goal of our talk to explain what it is, what you can do, and, you know, what are your options? And Kim spoke so eloquently about this. I'm like, we need to get you in. And this is last minute. So really, thank you, Kim, for jumping on and being so great. Well, thank you for having me here. I don't know if I'm so eloquent, I guess. <laughs> writing writing and speaking are two different things that's okay it's a casual conversation I'm exposing myself right now yeah <laughs> well I'm on your show <laughs> okay so show how hold awesome this Kim. and you know what PCOS has so many components to it there's so many different journeys in your life whether or not it's your you know you're just going through puberty and figuring yourself out and realizing you're not getting a period or perhaps you're going through a fertility journey uh, and you're trying to regulate your period so you have more options in a year. I mean, we only have 12 times a year when we get to try to get pregnant. And if your periods aren't regular, you can choose acupuncture and Chinese medicine to help. And I personally did that and went to an acupuncturist to help me uh, before I even knew I had PCOS. So Kim, tell us about that. Tell us about like acupuncture to regulate periods. Perhaps you're not even trying to get pregnant. You just want to have a period that shows up once a month because you're like, okay, I need to feel like normal. Should we back up though? Should we actually talk about what the heck PCOS is? Because you said yeah. you didn't even know you had it, I but you did. had irregular menstrual cycles. So right. Kim, can you speak to what is PCOS and like maybe the parameters around it and how prevalent it is? I can speak a little bit about it. It's polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's a, a complex uh, disorder that is... That we, we don't really know what cause, causes it. That's why it's called a syndrome, right? And um, uh, doctors have to uh, do blood tests and also do an ultrasound on you to then come together and say, if you have it or not, you have to meet a few criteria. And, um, but for, uh, at a patient level, they, they start to wonder if they have if something is wrong with something is off with their body when they're not having regular period, so that's one sign. Or they may notice um, a weight change, weight gain, so that's the metabolic side. And they might notice um, uh, excessive uh, hair growth in, in areas or um, a male uh, pattern hair growth, so then they, they you know, start to notice. Um, that, you know, is, is this normal for me as a woman? And so those are the three areas that might bring patients to their uh, doctor's office and say, hey, is, this, is this normal? And, and, and then doctors go ahead and, and do uh, blood tests for those areas, right? So well, maybe or maybe tests. not, though. I mean, yep. I don't know about you, but I feel like a lot of women don't even know they have it until they are actually trying to conceive. And then, you know, prior to that, either they don't take notice or they just think it's so cumbersome and that it's normal or that there's just something wrong with them and nobody can figure it out. 
right? Yeah. Or they have severe acne and they see on TikTok (laughs) that they're learning how to diagnose themselves. So that you can technically diagnose without blood work and ultrasound because your androgen excess can show up as severe cystic acne, which is, you know, when your testosterone levels are too high, you don't have to have the blood work to confirm it. In fact, sometimes blood work doesn't show up for me. It was three times the value of normal, but Mm -hmm. um, that was later. And at that point I didn't have cystic acne. So you can have different times Mm -hmm. in your life where it shows up with excess androgens. And then you have to have irregular periods, you know, where they're more than 35 days apart or less than 21 days apart um, to kind of have that second aspect um, or, or finding. Um, and then thirdly, you could, if you want, get it confirmed with an ultrasound, but if you have those first two, you know, in your life, sometime where there's excess androgens and then the irregular periods, you can pretty much confirm the diagnosis based on that. And then people usually want to know a little bit more, like, is my, you know, do I have the ultrasounds, like the cysts on ultrasound and they're not even, as we know, really cysts, right? There's lots of follicles, you know, clustered around the outside of the ovary finding, but you don't have to have that to confirm it, which is very magical in my opinion, because back in the day, you know, nobody believed that I had it because I was not grossly overweight and I didn't have what some people will call, you know, a beard, which I think is really rude. It's like just excess hairs or hirsutism on the chin, right? That, and then, so there's this like classic look that we think of as uh, associated with a woman with PCOS, but it totally can be hidden and you don't see it. You don't and, have to be overweight. You know, if you don't mind me interjecting, uh, the prevalence is so high and I'm, I'm not, not forgetting when we interviewed Dr. Bentoff, which is episode 45, which you need to check out. He was talking about how um, there's a study he did and his paper he wrote about how when, was it um, people that had more like the Mediterranean style diet or like Mexicans having their traditional foods, which has lower calories, it's yeah. not you know, it's not packaged foods. And then they come and adopt the American lifestyle thinking, you know, this is like the life, yet the life brings with it PCOS induced conditions, right? And the lifestyle that, and he said something to the effect of like 28% of women, which is insane. Yeah. Like a quarter of women will get that through North American diet and lifestyle. It'll, really kind of, it'll come out. So they're in, in their endocrine condition surfaces, even for some women postpartum, if they're struggling with weight and, and nutrition and, and self-care and taking care of themselves, it'll show up after pregnancy. Sometimes I've seen, mm-hmm. they don't realize that because they've gotten pregnant, it was easy to get pregnant. So it's not on the radar at all. And then they gain weight, have str- they're struggling with nutrition and lifestyle because they're now new moms and shows up then. So it's quite fascinating when it shows up, how it shows up and how we're all very different in how we present with the symptoms. But really at the end of the day, you just need two of those three findings and yes. you don't have to have the blood work and ultrasound, which is so good because, you know, sometimes uh, it takes forever to get to in to see a specialist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, th- I remember um, Dr. Fiona McCullough, we, he, we interviewed as well in the past, yeah. so you can find that through our uh, website somewhere or through our YouTube channel, actually. And, um, you know, she has a great book called eight steps of reversing your your PCOS. PCOS. Ah. And, you know, we, and she does, does discuss in detail the Rotterdam criteria, the three that we're talking about. And, you know, she even says that just like four kinds of PCOS types and um, perhaps actually it could even be just one sign and you could have PCOS. So I thought that was interesting. And, uh, but let's, let's talk about switch gears and talk about what does Western science do for PCOS really quickly. And then let's look at, you know, more natural ways. And because we brought you on Kim, um, you know, we're representing, we're representing the Chinese medicine. <laughs> so can you share with us what's like the first line of therapy for menstrual disorders and especially for PCOS? Yeah, I, I and I see it from my patients too, right? Um, if they're not trying to conceive and, and recently we've had uh, patients uh, in, from university reaching out um, uh, with their uh, PCOS struggles and they're um, asked to be put on uh, to be on uh, birth control, right? And uh, to to use um, birth control to regulate their period. So that's that's the um, first line. 
And of course it works. It works because if you actually, you know, they shut you down really is what they're doing. And the bleeding is a false bleed. So you get monthly cycle, but you're actually not ovulating anyway. So it, it, there's a suggestion like, oh, it's regulating my period. But really it's like falsifying uh, your natural cycle to begin with because it cuts off ovulation altogether and it allows you to bleed at the end of the cycle, right? When they first came out with the pill, I don't know if you guys know this, and um, they produced the pill without bleeding, but women freaked out. So then they changed the formatting and say, okay, fine, we'll allow them to bleed. So they feel like they're normal. Hmm. So I thought that was interesting. Anyway, not so bad. That, and that is so fascinating because nowadays I'll say in some instances when someone's super anemic, I'll say, uh, you know, you might want to consider going on the pill back to back for a few months to, you know, stop your menstrual cycles so you can really rebuild. Like if we're talking severe. Smart. Anemic. Yeah. And, and, and doctors will recommend it too. And I, I am coming to realize you know, that, that that's really not necessary to have the, the period, but it makes sense that you would want to feel like everybody else, you know, yeah. but you're not ovulating and you don't get the same hormones and it's not um, a solution because once you get off the pill, all your symptoms come back. So it's better in my opinion, to figure stuff out and, you know, see a practitioner like him, Mary or myself, where we can help you understand yourself and get your periods more regular ovulating. So what would you do then next, Kim? If you're on the pill, then what? Well, actually, uh, let's just say this. Yeah. If you're trying to conceive, you can't be on the pill. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so let's talk about that. And what the heck yeah. are you going to do? It's like, oh, wait, I want to have a, uh, I want to get pregnant but I'm on the pill, so I can't, so I'm going to get off, but now I don't have a period. Like, I, don't we see women that get off the pill and they come into our clinic and say, I haven't had a period for two years. <laughs> Not all, but you know, it happens. Yeah. And, um, and there are also um, patients who are interested in trying uh, with their own effort, the, you know, lifestyle changes, exercise and other um, natural ways to, uh, restore their regular cycles before, you know, considering their birth control as well. You know, being a herbalist, we are always looking to customize a, 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 a herbal solution for patient using uh, every uh, uh, observations that we are trained to do. And um, so we, uh, we, we want to find uh, herbs, not because, you know, they're, they're uh, the, the same herbs we use for all PCOS patients, but um, because patients has a, a certain um, constitution and then we, we find a custom solution for that. Is there research around Chinese herbs? Is there, and, and you know, I'm, I'm just coming from a patient perspective, listening to this. It's like, okay, fine. You know, I'll try things, but is it safe? And are, is there research around it? So can, can we address that a little bit? Yeah, Jia Wei Xiao Yao San is a classical formula that's been around uh, for thousands of years. And uh, Chinese uh, civilization has always been great at writing down everything. Like if you are in history, uh, history buff, you're like there's so the endless amount of material to read through. And so I, I, uh, in Chinese medicine, it's been very helpful to document what worked experientially and then pass that down. Um, and um, uh, so that that the, the formula has been uh, used for for a long time. Um, for uh, uh, myself, I I I thought you know Jiao Wei Xiao is uh, pretty uh, pretty useful for some of my PCOS patients, and uh, because it's PCOS Awareness Month, I wanted to uh, uh, research a little bit and see what's been published uh, in recent years. And uh, I came across a study um, in uh, 2019. Uh, uh, it is a uh, uh, from Taiwan. Jiao Wei Xiao Yosan came up, came out on 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 top, um, uh, and it's uh, prescribed uh, uh, widely for uh, PCOS patients of different ages too, which is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, in that, um, surprisingly, the Patient group 18 to 25 uh, are, are very open to uh, uh, trying uh, uh, Chinese medicine. And um, I, I think maybe it's helpful to uh, let 
uh, our listeners know that um, in Asia, like in specifically China, the uh, or sorry Taiwan, uh, I misspoke. Uh, there is a national health uh, insurance program. So sort of like if we're since we're in Ontario, it's the OHIP of Ontario. So that's the uh, NHI program. It covers both uh, Western pharmaceuticals and and Chinese medicine uh, equally. And so wow. uh, access to uh, Chinese medicine is. So in Taiwan. There's this national health insurance, which covers not just regular Western medicine, but Chinese herbal medicine equally. That's amazing. And, you know, it makes sense because really Chinese herbal medicine, as Tanya already alluded to, it like has been around for thousands of years. And as Kim has mentioned, we have been keeping tabs and what I call the longest experiential medicine in the world, meaning that, you know, case by case, study by study, it's been documented on what things work, what things doesn't, you know, the formulation. So it's a really rich with a long history of success. So it makes sense that it's covered. In the West, however, it is so considered so new and there's not enough data and all that stuff that it's not at all. I mean, anyway. It we would take the burden off the OHIP system if it was covered. Hundred percent, yes, because we see miraculous things, and you know, since you uh, Kim has been on board, just so you all know, I mean, you guys need to reach out to him if you want herbal Chinese herbal medicine. See Kim Hang. Um, <laughs> I don't. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but I remember when you first came on board and you were talking about your experience in China in the gynecology department and how the women came in with their menstrual pads and they would show you. We are trained to use all the observation technique to come up with a formula that works for the patient. And in ancient times, that included looking at the color of the blood, the texture of the blood, um, and, 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 and heaviness. Um, and so not just you know, how painful it is for you and what makes the pain go, uh, feel better, it's, it's everything. Yeah, and that's so important because that is how we distinguish because again, PCOS is a syndrome that is made for diagnostic ease. And really when it comes to customized herbal medicine, we really need to delve in symptom by symptom, right? Like how often are you getting your parents, if at all? What color is the blood? Do you have pain? Do you have spotting? Do you have um, menstrual cramping? right? Like how big are the blood clots? And so that's why I thought it was kind of cool that you um, were able to physically see it when the women bring in the menstrual pads. Now, of course, we have modern era and people can like take a picture if they want. <laughs> yeah. And so far, we're just talking about one formula. But in, in fact, um, so I, I just found it fascinating that, you know, what I found to be the formula I use most often uh, is reflected in the survey that they did on doctors in the whole of Taiwan. Hmm. Um, but when we look into the study more, um, it, it, it's not the only formula used for PCOS. Um, the second most common is Wen Jing Tang, um, and then there's Gui Zifu Ling Wan and Dang Gui Sha Rao San and Sa Fu Zhu Yizan. So that's, those are the top five uh, formulas used for PCOS because like we do see PCOS uh, patients with PCOS present quite differently. It's there's it's not just one formula that uh, fits all patients, and so we 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 are we are mindful of that. So again, then this comes to mind. It's like you know, full disclaimer. This is not medical advice. If you want to seek the help of someone like him, just reach out, right? And um, you can reach us at aliveholistichealth.ca. And Kim is available to have a free consult as well, just to see if it fits your needs. And, you know, uh, back in the day, we used to make people boil their herbs. And there's two reasons why we don't do that so much anymore. Because Number one, I find compliance is very low. Like, I'm, I, you know, when I first started practice, you know, that going back almost 30 years, I, that's all I used, raw herbs. And the compliance wasn't so great. Initially, it's like, yes, let's do it. And then over time, it drops off. 
So things like, so now we use more granulars and it, what's great about that is that we don't worry about contamination because they actually test the batches, right? So, and there's convenience. So you literally reconstitute it like a tea and you drink it like a tea. Yes, uh, we ordered our uh, granule formula from a the herd dispenser, which is a, uh, can we call it local business? They're based in Aurora. <laughs> yes. And um, they, they sourced the granules from uh, Tianjiang, uh, and, which is a brand, and, and Sanjiu, which is another brand. But we we uh, trust them. We source it out ourselves in terms of like you know who what who what manufacturer what distributor do we trust? Because especially if you're creating life, like as we know, the um, whatever goes into the mom crosses the placenta, and it's directly direct access to the kid. So it's like we want it to be safe. We want it to be healthy and easily done. So higher compliance, all that. And so then let's speak to, you know, because we, we do see a lot of PCS, you know, all day long and people just in general with menstrual disruptions or uh, people trying to conceive. And, you know, uh, again, I don't know, like we didn't ask for any kind of um, consent, but maybe we could speak to a case like, can you think of a case of a woman with PCOS, not naming names and how doing acupuncture in Chinese medicine has helped? Like we've been talking about herbal so far, but I, I have patients uh, in that age group that found acupuncture alone to be effective, and uh, that that's that's great. It's, uh, yeah, it's, you know what? Thank you, thank you for saying that because it is true. And uh, Tanya had already mentioned it, and just a little mini insight for myself: I had irregular periods in my and in my twenties, and after I actually started. Uh, doing acupuncture myself and I'm I'm a world traveler I love to travel and when I knew that there was a trip coming up and you know who wants to be menstruating when they're on a trip so what did Mary Wong do I would do acupuncture right before a trip so I would have my period before I would go traveling and it worked every time <laughs> good um yeah and uh the the other positive about uh, acupuncture is um they are coming in around once a week, maybe sometimes once every two weeks. Um, and, you know, whereas with herbs, you, you do, it, it'd be better if you can uh, try to have a routine set where you uh, have a tea, a herbal tea uh, twice a day. Um, th there's different advantages. So sometimes people can come in. Uh, I have people who are uh, just doing virtual consults. Um, virtual console so they're not coming in person and we can just send the tea the herbal tea to their uh, address and so that there's that convenience um, and then I have um, also currently a patient who is trying to conceive and uh, she's never had a regular uh, cycle it happens and one of the uh, main goal I, I said with her is well let's just try to get your uh, I'll get you a regular cycle, so within thirty, like thirty-five day cycle, and 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 I never f forget. Like she, at, the, at the end, before we ended the call, she said, "Well, we can try, but I've never had a regular cycle in my life." <laughs> so we we met back in three weeks. Um, she had her uh, cycle, um, and um, and I and then she, she was uh, she was a bit surprised, and I said, "You know." Let's just see if it can be uh, regular, right? This is what I'm looking for. Let's have a regular cycle. One, one, you know, we we have this is a great start, but let's just uh, keep it going. As I learned from one of my mentors, he says one plus one is an expen exponential okay. effect, right? Meaning, you know, when you do one modality, add another modality, and together synergistically, bam, you're going to have an exponential effect. And of course, maybe add to it lifestyle dietary changes, see someone like Tanya as well, who's directing you with, you know, the supplements and um, even mindset and sleep. That's okay. I have seen some miraculous cases with PCOS and sometimes PCOS, you can end up having more than one gynecological condition together. So with endometriosis or 
PCOS alone, where their patient is getting acupuncture and Chinese medicine herbs and the heaviness of the flow subsides and the pain, sometimes there is pain with other existing conditions because usually PCOS doesn't necessarily have painful periods, but in the case that there is, I see some quite miraculous, I have seen some quite miraculous um, improvements in both regularity, heaviness of flow and the pain just subsiding with acupuncture combined with Chinese medicine, herbs alone, without even nutrition changes. I mean, I always advocate yes. always, uh, of course, for yes. lifestyle changes, but I always find it really fascinating when it works and there's not much nutrition changes going on. So right. clearly like there, it, it makes a difference. I've seen it clinically and obviously there's research to, to show it as well because they will standardize for that. It's cool. But yeah, I just have, I thought I'd throw that in because um, it is quite profound. Thank you. And we see it all day long. So I forget the miracles that it does. Yeah. <laughs> right. I can like, think oh. of my, I like my patients are popping into my head yeah, <laughs> no, of course. as you're yeah. asking that we you're putting him on the it. spot. So no, I, yeah, no, yeah. no, thank you for that. And it is so true. And really, you know, when it comes to treatment of any kind, right. So let, I'll just address this very quickly, right before we pop off and, you know, people will say, well, how long do I need to do this for? right? How many treatments do I need? How many months of herbs can I do? Well, I guess we're not all made equally. So we all respond very differently. So some people literally, bam, like as soon as they start treatment, we see miraculous results. And other people, it may be slower to visualize. Now, having said that, it's like, then you need to be more conscientious, be, be more, um, be your own body detective and notice it's like oh maybe i think it is less heavy oh my gosh maybe i have less pain this cycle but if you're not aware if you're not alert you don't even notice changes sometimes right so thank you for bringing that piece in and it's so important so wherever you are in your reproductive years or not like you know when it comes to pcos it's life right so um you know, you, there are lots of things that you can do. Chinese medicine is certainly one of them. So like reach out to us at a live, uh, you can have a free little mini consult or just dive right in. If you're like, oh my gosh, this is me. And I need to get result resolution now. Right. <laughs> Which is like everyone, we want everything instantaneous. But the point is you may notice effects quite quickly. And it's from mood to, you know, menstrual effect to energy you know there's so many different things anyway quickly any side effects with tcm herbs kim that patients should be aware of is it mostly gastro like gastric digestive stuff if there is going to be any at all that's a great question sure uh, it's i i find it to be uh uncommon um you can it, it always it, it depends on the practitioner you can start with a, a strong dose and then and then uh, reduce the dose if patients have uh, some side effects or you can start with a, a standard dose and work just work, work that dose dosage up um, but with anything ingested you you can have sensitivity um, you, you can have um, it, it is common uh, for patients to have some initial um, uh, bowel movements uh, uh, increases in the first couple of days of uh, taking herbs. And I think patients just uh, see it as a, uh, like a cleansing and then they, their body adjusts to it and then they move, move forward from there. Um, you're, you're, uh, I'm, I'm always available for patients to email me if there's some concern. But, um, well, especially because you customize your formulas, usually you're going to be targeting, you're going to consider that as part of the patient assessment and diagnosis if they're constipated versus if they have loose bowel movements to start. And then you would adjust the herbs in a formula. It's not some standard formula. You're kind of adjusting it for them, right? Yeah, that's right. And I, and I always let patients know to expect a formula to uh, work uh, well with you with very minimal side effects, if any at all. Uh, cool. That's what we expect, and we can we, we work toward that. Uh, cool. Thanks, guys. And so in their show notes, so you can refer back to myfertology.com, and we'll have show notes to uh, and link to the research that um, Kim will be providing for us. 
and uh, some of the, our other episodes that are related and uh, for basically your whole fertile life. Mm-hmm.